All right, welcome to How to Cheat at Illustration Part 2. I am making this monster here. I'm just going to start with a mannequin. I remember if they have cool ways to move this mannequin around. Let's see. Well, that kind of moves it. Ah, okay, cool. So this little, uh, <clears throat> This flying monster guy is going to be the target that Beaumark is shooting his arrow at. Uh, I think I'm going to pose him in just kind of a default T-ish pose for now. Close enough. Let's make a unified skin out of him. Or is that adaptive skin? I haven't done this in a while. Uh, that'll work, whatever. Low density. Make adaptive skin. Now I can sculpt on him. Uh, let's see, I still want his resolution to be lower right now. Damon and Aletha, hello. Mordecaida, hello. I changed the layout a little bit because YouTube informed me that, uh, what is this called? Comments, chat. Apparently, um, when you play back a live video on YouTube, uh, you can see the chat down in a separate window, so I don't need to take up the screen real estate that's down here uh, with redundant chat, so awesome. Uh, Dragon Ross or I.O. to you as well. Dottie, welcome. Uh, what am I doing? I am changing the resolution much lower. That's better. I just want to be moving large forms around. This is something that is true for uh, traditional sculpting as well. You want to want to be using the smallest or sorry the largest tool as long as possible uh, to keep yourself from getting trapped in uh, to doing detail that will end up having to get moved later. So one of this guy's unique physical traits is that his mouth is, goes directly into his chest. That is because they often just grab little critters whole and shove them in there and take them back to the nest to feed to their queen. They don't really need advanced, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> digestive systems, maybe? Because I'm trying to make these guys scientifically plausible, if I want them to actually be able to fly, they have to be extremely uh, light, which means fragile. And that's cool. I'll make some um, 
interesting beasties to fight means they're only really a threat in large groups unless you're foolish enough to uh, kill one and stand right next to it because all these little hairs all over it uh, are like poison uh, laden poison tipped hairs and they shoot out of them when he dies so you don't want to be too close to him or at least if you're unprotected Just stretch this entire guy out. Lita says, You have the same last name as one of my favorite authors, H.L. Burke. Stevie says, Hey, Josh. Hey, Stevie. Parts out for his psyche claw things. at this, so I have to add my own sounds. I'm temporarily inflate these just so I can mask them off better. Dottie, you're not related to H.L. Burke. So disappointed. I mean, I'm related to George Foreman, so you should be related to H.L. Burke. protruding from his clavicles. Exactly, that we know of. If you go back far enough, everyone's related, so... That's why I can say I'm related to George Foreman. Plus, I have a George Foreman grill, so... It just makes sense.
Hmm. Not doing what I want. So I'm just going to try to inflate all together. And then I can just uh, squash these. I think that'll work. Feeling pretty good today. We got our first like hint of spring slash summer coming along. Had an awesome hike up Rattlesnake Lake. It was a really great climb. It's about a 45 minute drive from here, but you get to go up through all these great uh, woods and then you come out on this huge cracked boulder. It's like, I don't know, the size of a large house hanging off the side of the mountain. And it's just a gorgeous view and it was a perfect temperature. It was delicious. Just trying to get, um, uh, what is the word? Conditioned, I guess, for all the uh, hiking. I'm going to be doing the end of June with my son, where we're going to be going all over the uh, western U.S., mostly deserty places, I think, and jumping around on boulders and stuff. Is asking how was Comic Con last weekend. Uh, it was cool. Signed, um, I don't know, a couple dozen fans, uh, calendars, and other miscellaneous stuff they bought at the uh, Four Fans by Fans booth. And then, um, since I had a pass, I went and looked around at stuff. I didn't go to any of the panels or anything like that, but I met, I met some interesting folks. I found out there's a um, some kind of a store. I, I don't even know what that kind of store is called, but a store that sells uh, the molding and casting materials that I use, um, which is awesome. It's semi-local. It's probably about an hour away from me, but... Um, man, when you buy stuff from Smooth On or their distributors, the shipping is so incredible. It's like sometimes you end up paying more for shipping than for the product. Um, and so having a local place where I can buy that stuff is very exciting. They had a they had a booth at Comic Con where they were shipped their stuff. So yay. There is another local place, um, but it's in Seattle. And the last time I went to Seattle, I got a ticket because I turned right at a red light where, you know, normally you stop, you look both ways. It's a red arrow, you're allowed to turn right. But not at this particular intersection. I hate Seattle. I hate going into downtown areas in general so much. Uh, so, and this place is, is not a downtown area, so yay. And there are more, um, like, the place in Seattle is a pottery place, so 
their selection of the particular type of stuff that I want is, is pretty slim. This place is actually made for people who make like art stuff, not just pottery. Not that pottery isn't art, but you know what I mean. Sculptural stuff. Sculpting and casting stuff. Yeah, Alif, I mean, I do not have a problem with um, general uh, general stresses of social stuff too bad, um, but I don't know, just driving in downtowns, it feels like everything is stacked against you. Unless you know the place and drive there all the time, I just, I know I'm making mistakes. And that's just not a good feeling. Why would I want to stay in a place like that? Okay, it's got kind of bell bottoms. I don't know. I'm probably not going to be like super slavish to this um, concept. I did this, I don't know, probably seven or eight or nine or ten or a thousand years ago. I can't tell times anymore. Um, well, I do know this sketchbook that it's from, I started in 2003? I think it goes from 2003 to 2013. So I had it for a decade. I probably, I need to do some more studying, some more scientific, uh, um, investigation before I finalize these guys' design. I need to really dig into, uh, what, how much things weigh. I need to do some calculations of sorts. cavity thing can be pretty expandable depending on how large a load they're carrying. Basically the heavier the thing is the less they can fly with it and the more they kind of have to hop slash hover. he's carrying is an egg that they try to attach to critters to incubate the egg for them. Janae and Michelle say hi in passing. Alright, well, um, 
tell them I'm ignoring them in passing. McDewey here. There we go. Oh, looks like I missed a vert. say they're going to unsubscribe or they're telling you to unsubscribe, Alita. I mean, you're one of my best customers, so I can't have you unsubscribe. if I'm going to make separate objects for his wings or pull them out from what he's got going on here. I tend to just want to do the long stupid way because uh, it's already in the workflow and it only uses the tools that I'm already using. And that's how you get kind of stagnant in your uh, skill set by just doing the same thing over and over again. Instead of taking a little bit of time to learn uh, to do it better. Sinister Hunch.
going to do. Actually, let me save it real quick. Let's put it in here. I really need to come up with a sensible file structure for all this. Uh, what is this guy called again? Right? Yes. And I always spell it wrong. We're going to go to ye olde website to double check. This is what you guys should do too. You should go to breathoflifeart.com. It's the best website, you guys. It's so good. Okay. Uh, Tales from Telefar. Sentient species. There we go. Drid. So D R I D D. Y O N. problem that I have. I know there's a smart way to do this, but I don't know what it is. So if I, if I append a sub-tool, say, grab, so it makes good basis for a wing. Um, so I can do all sorts of stuff to that cylinder to make it wing-like. Places that you can mirror things. Information, I can mirror. Okay, well, I flipped it alright. How do I mirror it and also have another one? It's just such a simple, obvious thing, and, you know, it's been a couple months since I've done it, so I have no idea where it lives anymore. And this is why I would have just done it this low, stupid way. Um, in fact, I'm going to go back and just do it this low, stupid way. Let's 
says, what's the reason behind the shape of their chest and the sticky outy thing? Um, well, I mean, the real reason is I'm always looking for ways to make things different than just your standard orc or harpy or, you know, whatever other sort of archetype this would fulfill. Um, but fictionally, I would say it has mostly to do with the fact that they, um, when they're out and about, their point is to either be grabbing food to bring back to the queen or to be uh, planting eggs on things and uh, carrying them back to the hive. Um, and so they don't, they're not like eating stuff into their tummy, they're, it's basically like a holding sack. So it's like another arm to just help stuff things in. It's kind of, you know, inspired by insects, the way they have those little ins insects and crustaceans, have those little scoopy mandible things. It says, yeah, your mom was showing me things to do with writing that would make things easier, except it's all weird technical stuff, so I'd rather do it the slow, stupid way. <laughs> yep. Notice last time I did. Uh, trying to mesh him, the resolution went. Seemed to go down. I don't know, something changed. It's weird. I don't know why I did that. But I also don't care. Mostly, um,. Right now, I just want to get a uh, serviceable silhouette so I can throw them in my little illustration thing and um, as a placeholder. And I'll draw him all fancy. Oh, 
actually. While I'm doing that. Look at that. And all about lots of topics. Try oh. asking me about music, history, or geography. No thanks, Alexa. Uh, I'm going to add. Here we go. Lost myself for a second. Um, append. Here we go. Plane. Boom. This way we can have a ground in our scene. Sub tools, we'll find out. I posted a thing on the forums asking if there's a way to move your viewport around without having to put your mouse up on these tools all the time, and I forgot to check it. So let's see. Okay, um, well, import. down. Where is merge down? Reorder. What even? Oh, I'll bet I can't because this is a, this is, it's a, it's a, not a, whatever it needs to be. So I need to make it a poly mesh 3D. Okay. Then I need to go back here. I need, this is so stupid. Okay, I need to delete this. Then I need to append the thing that I made out of the plane, uh, which is this it or may, maybe now can I merge down? Or is that not really the thing that I made? This is so stupid. This is... The only thing worse than this stream right now is those streams of people that just eat. Painful. 
I just want a plane. That's all I want. Okay. Letha says, you sound like me when wrestling with a program that refuses to have simple, sensible, easy ways to do things. Yes. That is what you are like. Uh, okay. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have a plane in there. I'm going to call this... Um, call this... Tridian Drone 2. Okay, then this plane can just be called Dridian Drone, which is stupid, but whatever. Then... Oh, wait. I was not exporting, was I? Can I save you guys? No, I was. Okay, cool. thousand percent look at that looks like he's oh, he's buried in there that's fine no I don't want that to move I guess while well, I've got the plane selected I'm just gonna scale it a million billion no nope, I'm gonna try to scale it a million billion Having it, the whole ground flash yellow every time the cursor is over it sure is annoying. semi-intuitive. Oh. Oh, look. Okay, so I've got keyboard movement. Really sluggish, awkward keyboard movement. That makes no sense, but it's something. Okay, what am I doing? I'm rotating. Okay, get over here. Good. touch the three pixel wide arrow tip to move. Thanks for believing in me, Lisa. Okay. Now I got Bomark, got a Tridian, we got a Mulig. Oh that reminds me. I don't know, I don't want to close it. What are you doing? File. Oh. Important. Uh, music platform. 
Weapons, don't need you these, don't need groups, don't need materials. Still don't know what services are, but okay. Find yourself with things giving me on the stars and back again. Infinity. Ooh, look how nice and big that is. Oh, because I had it probably scale at a thousand. this the other day I did not have time to either bring it into ZBrush or bring the Mulig into Maya to um, determine if uh, it would fit at all so we're finding out right now Even him out a bit, he's kind of doing a wheelie or something. I'm going to have to bring the, uh, the Mulig and the platform into the same program at the same time that is not this program uh, to get there to get these pieces working together. But for now, I just want to walk out the scene. Yeah, I like these. These little straps here are supposed to go around these two legs, and this strap is supposed to go around his uh, chest. So it looks like uh, yeah, it looks like Bill Mark's gonna have to be quite a bit further back. Oh, which is a good opportunity to. Now, 
Can I just drag this into there? Yes. So if I move bow mark, will bow and arrow go with him? Yes! All right, it acted like a normal 3D program. It's a miracle. Make the mule's legs shorter. So he's gonna end up being that big. Let's see how I have this sketch. Hmm. And it's pretty darn big. It'd have to be to get this size of a platform up there. I think that's uh, that's a good point to call it for today. Um, I have a lot of other stuff I need to get to, so and I'm frustrated as all heck. I hate learning new software. I hate it so much. Um, save. That's what I want to do. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah, I'm going to call it a little short today, but um, again, it's the first sunny, not freezing day of the year so far. So I've got to go out and do something in that sun and not freezing weather. So I'll catch y'all guys on Wednesday and have a good rest of your weekend unless you live in Europe or in Australia. And then have a great Monday. Bye, guys.